I'm Rolene Marks. This is the Israel Brief brought to you by Lay of the Land, where you check in every Monday to Thursday for your top stories making headlines in Israel and the region. So let's kick off with today's top stories and we begin with the joint press conference held last night with Prime Minister Yair Lapid and Minister of Defence Benny Gantz. The two leaders addressed the media and I'll tell you what Prime Minister Lapid said first. The Prime Minister said that Israel had restored deterrence after the conclusion of Operation Breaking Dawn and he lauded the resilience of Israel's southern citizens. He also said that Israel had dealt a devastating blow to Palestinian Islamic Jihad's leadership and capabilities. The Prime Minister also stressed that he is heartbroken by the loss of life and also reiterated that Israel does everything in our power to ensure that we mitigate civilian casualties. He thanked the various leaders like Alternate Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, Leader of the Opposition, Benjamin Netanyahu, IDF Chief of Staff Aviv Kochavi, Defence Minister Gantz, Police Chief Kobe Shabtai, Ronen Bar, who is the leader of the Israeli security agents, and the tens of thousands of IDF soldiers working around the clock to ensure that Israelis were kept safe. And he said, we will not apologize for using force to defend our citizens. The Prime Minister also had a message for Palestinians. Speaking directly to Palestinians, he said, there is another choice that you can make. There is another way to live your life. You know full well that we can create a good life, we can create employment, and if you choose to follow down the path of the Abraham Accords and the Negev Summit, you will live a better life. Prime uh, Defence Minister rather Benny Gantz also addressed the media, albeit in a shorter address. He said that Israel had achieved all of our aims during the three-day operation and he warned terrorists that Israel will not shy away from using preemptive force, whether it's in Khan Yunus in the Gaza Strip or Tehran in Iran, to stop any attacks on our citizens. And he thanked as well all who were involved in helping to keep Israel safe. Earlier today, President Isaac Herzog phoned his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin. The two leaders spoke about bilateral relations between the two countries. And the president, who was the former head of the Jewish Agency for Israel, addressed the ongoing crisis. Now, we don't know what President Putin's response was, but we do know that last month the Ministry of Justice in Russia put forward a, a ruling that the work of the Jewish Agency for Israel, which facilitates the Aliyah, the immigration of the Russian Jewish community and that of Belarus as well, and that has been operational in Russia, be dissolved with immediate effect. An Israeli delegation has tried to appeal to the Ministry of Justice as well as the Russian Foreign Ministry and the case has been heard in court but no progress has been made. This is a very, very serious situation and there is ongoing concern and growing concern about the plight of Russian Jewry should the Jewish agency cease to operate in Moscow. In other news, and no great surprise, following Operation Breaking Dawn, the UN Security Council convened yesterday for an emergency session. The Palestinian envoy Riyad Mansour accused Israel of unjustified aggression. The Egyptian envoy also criticized Israel, which is interesting because Egypt was responsible in helping to broker the ceasefire between Palestinian Islamic Jihad, a proscribed terror group, and the State of Israel. America's ambassador to the United Nations, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, supported Israel's right to self-defense and said that the unprovoked 
uh, uh, firing of rockets and the indiscriminate firing of rockets by Palestinian Islamic Jihad endangers both Palestinians and Israelis and needs to stop. It was the United Kingdom who had a very, very harsh rebuke for Palestinian Islamic Jihad, saying that they condemn the firing of rockets onto Israeli civilians that endangers both Israelis and Palestinians and has resulted in the loss of life and that they support Israel's right to defend herself. However, it was Special Rapporteur Francesca Albanese who has caused the greatest controversy over the last couple of days. The Special Rapporteur has repeatedly tweeted out on Twitter that she supports the rights of Palestinians to resist what she calls the 55-year-old occupation. Albanese has a history of uh, uh, Holocaust denial and uh, calls for her to step down or at least be sanctioned by the United Nations are growing. And we end, and I know we normally like to end this broadcast on happy news, but today it is tinged with sadness. Like many of you around the world, Israelis are mourning the passing of the iconic actress and singer Olivia Newton-John, who passed away from breast cancer at the age of 73 yesterday. Now, what was moving earlier today was to hear her hit Xanadu played in Hebrew. I know I never knew that there was a Hebrew version of Xanadu. But as uh, what inevitably comes out at the time of a person's death is maybe some of the things that people don't know about them. And in this case, it is Newton-John's Jewish roots. Her maternal grandfather, Dr. Max Born, was a Nobel Prize winning physicist who was born in Germany and was forced to flee to England when the Nazis came into power in 1933. Her uncle Gustav was also a renowned pharmacist. And uh, Newton-John also referred to her Jewish heritage numerous times through her music, through her book, uh, citing uh, Kabbalah and using um, Hebrew terminology and words. We are all devastated that this icon, this shining bright light, has left us, in my opinion, way too soon. And may her memory forever be blessed. And we also want to take a moment to salute a very, very special warrior. Zili, the counter-terror canine, was killed earlier today in combat as IDF forces uh, arrested and killed a wanted Al-Quds uh, or Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade, sorry, uh, terrorist during a counter-terror raid. Zili was a counter-terror hero and he has been lauded by the police, the special forces, Prime Minister Lapid, all the media here in Israel and we join in with a salute to Zili. Thank you for your service to our country and as we do in Israel we honor all our fallen warriors, canine and human. And that brings us to the end of today's broadcast. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow for your latest headlines. But in the meantime, you can check out our website at www.layoftheland.com Dot online. Our Facebook community is at Lottel site and because of all the balagun as we call it here in Israel with changing the settings of Facebook we have lost uh, a few of our followers so if you are on Facebook please look for us we're at Lottel site give us a like give us a follow share our content we're on YouTube our channel is at the Israel Brief please consider subscribing by clicking on the red button liking and sharing our content and we're on Twitter at Lay of the Land 5. Hit us up there by clicking on the follow icon. So with uh, those news updates, I'm Raleen Marks. This is the Israel Brief. Don't forget to join me tomorrow as we take a look at your top stories.